Right folks, so we've already unboxed this and got on with it. Box 36, customer repair, Uniden Unios 300 base station, which stinks of fags. And Mark has already changed the capacitors before we even think about powering it up. Um, we're not going to do this on its main power supply until right at the end. It's full of... Uh, it's actually brown with nicotine this so these are the four capacitors that I've asked Mark to change so we've got the high-grade um, Nikicon ones in I'll start by testing these on this video I don't think I've even read the customers instructions but um, I think I don't think it was working but the first thing we've got to do is to change these capacitors and this is usually the root of most of the evils. I can see there's a modification which is going to have to be changed but we'll get the set working and aligned first. So yeah that 220 microfarad capacitor is 45 microfarads so that wasn't going to be working was it? This 220 microfarad capacitor is 50 microfarads looks like most of the farads have bolted this two, this 470 microfarad capacitor is still working, but a bit high at 516. And that's still working, but it's a little high. So two of those knackered, two of those are still working. Get them all changed, because if they're not changed now, they'll be knackered next week. And then you get the, you only just repaired this last week. Yeah, right, okay. This is how you learn your lessons. So we're going to connect it to 12 volts, uh, or 13.8 volts from the power supply as usual. Uh, in this case, it would be easier if I connect this. I don't know, we'll, we'll see. If I can get away with, I'll switch it to DC. Put the crocodile clips onto the power lead. Connected to the test gear. They, they did apologise for not sending a mic, but it doesn't really matter because I'm sure that they'll be using the standard mic and it won't make any difference. So the modification it's got, there's a strange thing underneath. There's a there's some wires go here. Is it an audio improvement in inverted commas? And there's a potted box there. Um I don't know what that's about, but we're going to have to get rid of it. So, I want a Uniden mic. And I expect the realistic service manual. We're on Sunday, I'm between church services. I've just got a few minutes to, to get Mark onto that. And if I can at least do the VCO and the transmitter before doing my next church service. I'd like to get this out of the way so the customer can have it back. So I don't I don't want to be doing it on a Sunday but you know there we go. I want a sheet of paper so we know what our parameters are. There's a possibility that tomorrow Monday I can't do any repairs at all because I'm booked for three organ jobs so that's certainly going to take me up to half past four I might be too knackered after that it's about the 15th I think it's the 16th even They're the capacitors which we've changed. So switch on the power supply, 13.8 volts, power on. It was blast on 36, it's lit up. Even the meter lamp works. And it sits there making some kind of hiss. So 
if there was two hundred and twenty microfarad capacitor, chances are the LED display wouldn't have come on with that. So hopefully we've got transmit. I'll switch picture in picture on, and we don't have transmit. Okay. How disappointing. Now, this has public address. Testing one two. One, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Why is it so loud? One, two, one, two. Why can't I adjust the volume on it? Or is that part of this silly mod? I don't know. Well, you can't adjust the volume of the public address on volume, and you can't adjust it on mic gain, so that's not clever, is it? Right, we're to get down to why there's no transmit. So, is it receiving? And what I'm trying to do is determine whether the synthesizer's running. So, the answer is, the synthesizer isn't running. So I hope that synthesizer chip hasn't failed. Right, I'll turn it off and I'll start by just looking underneath and make sure there isn't any dry joints or anything like that. actually see so with Mr. Chippy's toothbrush we'll just look round the synthesizer Whilst that's drying, I can see a dry joint there. Well, I could. Or a potential dry joint, shall we say. Not that these really suffer from dry joints. So we could have a duff reference crystal or we could have a lack of power to the phase like loop chip. God forbid we have a faulty phase like loop chip because that will be irreplaceable. I've said before, firm in Brazil says they've got them, uh, but they want twenty nine ninety nine each and I've got to buy a hundred. Well I'm not going to. It's one or two dry joints on this. I don't know what that link is. 
I'd hate to have to open up our own test set to to find out what's what. So I think we'll power it up upside down. And then we'll just see what we've got across that capacitor that Mark's changed. And we've got 8 volts. service manual out for the realistic 2000 and what should we have on the TC9119 It's such a bad copy. When I ordered the service manual originally from Tandis for £16.99, it was a photocopy, so this scan is of a photocopy, so it's not ideal by a long way. So I think pin 1 looks to be power. Uh, it probably has a pin out for the IC. Oh, we've got a voltage chart for the ICs, haven't we? So pin 1 should be 7.6 volts. Let's so get a meter back. I can never remember whether these are positive earth or... Sorry, I'll start again. I can't remember whether these are negative chassis earth or a floating chassis, so... do it like that pin one has seven and a half volts on it so that's not a problem what about the reference crystal where is the reference crystal oh it's there If the reference crystal wasn't operating, we'd have no, we'd have no nothing. So let's just look at that. And we've got no nothing. The so crystal is pin two. See what the thing says. Normally, there's a description in in realistic manuals. Hmm. Not when I want one. I'll get this other scope out.
Oh, oh, that didn't work. I'll try again. Pin two. It's 10.24. So that's running. But you can see the VCO is not being played with. So, back to the meter, what have we actually got on the VCO pin? Some of these smaller capacitors could have played up. Um, and the test point is resistor 52. Channel 40, we're on. It's there, isn't it? So we've got a logic high on receive, and we've got a logic high on transmit. So it's, it's not that he's going to want adjusting, it's that something is faulty. So we've got three capacitors there, which if they're as knackered as the, what, the 220 which came out, uh, we've got 50, 51 and 53. So I'll just look at where they are on the circuit if I can actually read it. I, I can't I can't read that. The, the thing to do is to change those capacitors. So we'll turn the power off, pause the video and change the capacitors. Right, it's now Tuesday. So we started this Monday. So we've put a lot of time into this, believe it or not, um, and we've got it working. Uh, we've ended up making a test jig because, as you all know, you can't get the TC9119 chips, which we felt had failed in this one. And uh, so we put another one in off a scrap chassis I'd bought. And the set still didn't work. And you start to think... Obviously the scrap chassis may have been scrapped because the TC9119 had failed. So I had a look at how many scrap chassis I've bought. And here, right here, right now, that's cute for a song, isn't it? We've got this one, which was a, a Uniden 200. We've yet to check that one. This is the one we've turned into a test jig. This was a Uniden 200. And what we've done is to, we tested this set and we got it to receive. It doesn't transmit. Probably one of the driver of the output transistors failed. Really doesn't matter. But it worked enough for us to verify that the phase lock loop chip's working. So what Mr. Chip has done, you can see he's put a socket in. Now you can't use these with a socket. I have seen it and it needs to, if you see a socket it really needs to go uh, because the slightest tarnishing of pins the things are going to malfunction so he's put the socket in and what we've been able to do is to take the chip out of this set, put it in here, radio just still doesn't work, in fact that's the chip in it right now. Uh, the, rad the chip which was in this set is now in this set. So, so far we've checked three chips out of the five That's, we've got four scrap chassis, haven't we? Anyway, we, we've got a scrap realistic, and that one was duff as well. It was just a board I bought, which had been broken in half. So this chip is now working, but not before that IC was changed. So I took this, these three transistors out, 
we've already precautionally uh, changed these capacitors and uh, I don't think there's any malfunction but it's just as a precaution and these transistors were working so we now got to the stage where the thing still wasn't operating so was it this chip uh, which is a TA I've got the old one here 7310 or is it 7 well I can't read changes glasses next question shall I put the soldering iron on or not yes I'll put the soldering iron I've got uh, 15 minutes before it's lunch CA738 at uh, CA7310P it's changed that and we've now got operation now I haven't got any of these in stock I thought I had I've just ordered some it's not a problem but uh, I've just ordered one so I recovered that out of a scrap Fidelity 1000 So, who's going to be the first person to go, Oh, you'll put bleed over into the set now. Oh. Good. Let's uh, switch the power supply on. 13.8 volts. Power on. Radio on. I've got transmit. And we go to channel 40 and we set the VCO. So for that I need the realistic manual. Not that realistic manual. This realistic manual. Here we go. So channel 40, test point 1, 3.5 volts. So I don't know if we can... I'll put our meter in the works. So there's our test point, which we've prodded lots of times on this radio, and we need 3.5 volts. So we'll adjust the VCO coil till we get that. Oh, in, on transmit, of course. Three point four five. Just check it again. Yeah. So I'll put picture in picture on. Is that the right screen? I'll come back to that coil when we do the receiver. Right, so we've now changed to channel four, uh, 20. Now, as you know, we can't do anything about if it's off frequency on these sets. If it's out of spec off frequency, then of course we can change the crystal, but that's all we can do. It's not adjustable. It's not. Hey, do you know it's pretty spot on, that isn't it? Twenty seven seven nine one two zero. So now we can start making some notes. No, no point was filling this in saying not working, not working, not working. Um, so twenty seven seven nine one two zero. So it's going to be twenty seven seven nine one two zero. Um, TC nine double one nine. TA. Is it seven three ten? Seven three ten second hand. We'll just charge a token pound for that. And there's some other capacitors gone in. Um which uh, we'll just say three caps at sixteen P. That'll do. I'm not no need to look them up. Uh 
so VCO um, out of lock channel 40 3.5 volts Let's look at deviation wallow on the right scale wallow wallow it's virtually spot on wallow it's 2.8 doesn't need much adjusting there um, so the output power let's go for that It is 3.8 watts on channel 40, on channel 1, 3.2 watts, on channel 40, 3.2 watts. Low power, back to channel 40, change scales, 500 milliwatts. Back to high power, see what the transmit current is, which is why we want these always tuned base stations on the bench power supply, and then we worry about the radio's own power supply. 976 milliamps, we're very efficient. So we've got the meter lamps working on transmit, it's reading the center of the red zone, which is high on these sets. come back to that um, we don't know about those those work that works that works no speaker uh, no mic comes with it so we'll come back to that when we've done a bit of a tune-up we'll change pages you can see how a one radio can cost three days of the time we have available they have you do the receiver first, which is topsy-turvy, not my training. 16 and 15 and 14, I want these in a particular order. Um, 16, 15, I think it's 2000, not 2000. Um, 16, 15, 14. Um, L12, L10. L10 is the one you adjust it with finally. Yeah, so that's transmit on these sets. So back to channel 20, we're on picture in picture, we're on transmit, we're on the high power scale, and we're whisker away from 4 watts. It's now 3.9. Three point nine in a whisker. Four point three, four point three, four point three. Let's warm that one up. Although it doesn't say so, but we're tuning down to get to four whilst not tuning up. Right, well. Well, that's now spot on. I'll bring back the clipboard. So, it's gone up 0.2 or what? It, we're going to get another six inches range now. Channel 40, 3.9 watts. Channel 1, huh. I could say 3.98 watts, I think would be about it. So we've balanced it so much better by just making sure everything is absolutely bob on, uh, as we would say in Yorkshire. Um, on channel 20.
Okay, so what else shall we adjust before lunch? Let's adjust low power because it's the next preset I can spy. So these now because we've now tuned it up, it's now 580 milliwatts. So we'll just pop that on to 400 milliwatts, which is where it should be. I know there's no legal requirement anymore for this, but it's part of the 2781 spec. Um, for those of you who didn't know, in 80 watt, you, you were only allowed errors up to one and a half meters in length. And if it was mounted on a pole more than seven meters from ground level, then you've got to switch your radio to low power. Not sure how many people did, but um, that was one of the things. But it's really useful feature, um, especially if, you, if you've got a mobile set, you're in a convoy and you only talk to the car behind you. There you go, that's 400 milliwatts, absolutely spot on. A little bit of cleaning there. So it's 0.4 of a watt. We used to have people, oh, let's stick it on quarter of a watt. No, it's not quarter of a watt, it's 0.4. Now, the current consumption, back on 4 watts, is now 982 milliamps. So, yep, it's tuned, it's under an amp. I think that's great. So, if this works, which I've researched is a... I've just popped it out so I could see. It says Bury Electronics AS2. It's a, just researching that. It's an auto squelch. We've spent so much on this radio, I don't want to start putting the customer's bill out by modifying that back to standard. If this works properly, that can stay. It's not illegal. Um, so we'll, we'll take that as it is. Power meter. I'm not going to be able to tilt this setup and show you until we get to the on-the-air test. Come on, Mr. 21, where is it? Do that one. Just look at the service manual. We've got deviation, which is VR5. And we've got VR3 for the meter. that one so it's Bob on the call deviation just needs to come down a tiny bit there we are let's put the oscillator on about right wallow wallow a little bit less wallow one two one two that's it so we've got deviation let's see these can be a bit a bit bassy these radios Testing one two, testing one two three four five. Good, it works into our handheld. Uh, so we'll come back to this um, after lunch. So that's done most of it. We'll set the power supply up. Mark did the recap on uh, on that while he was here. It's always useful to have other engineers here. It's amazing what. Little things we got done, like sorting out one of the, the bench power supplies, display didn't work, doing the transmit um, lamp on that um, Colt 295A I featured the other day, which I'd bought off eBay. If I can cram something else in today, um, I'm going to do the power supply that I bought in that box. And then we've covered uh, box 29, because we're on box 36 with a customer repair. And then we can go straight back onto a customer repair tomorrow. So, so far I've no reason to change any other capacitors. I'm not, I'm not a, a believer in doing blanket jobs. Because um, not all are affected, but um, 
you know sometimes when you start to be clutching at straws this is why we we've done those so what's killed the phase lock loop chip well all i can suspect is because the 220 micro hour capacitor failed it's that one i think it was left on and whatever has put whatever under a strain did that short out because of that capacitor and that put a strain on that which was already under strain from the capacitor i don't know but it, it's going to be absolutely reliable because everything's been replaced which could play up in that stage and we've got good volume because we've done those in the amplifier so you see i buy these radios these broken radios you know like for a tenor off uh, ebay when they're a chassis when they're off uh, or off uh, what do you call them i mean that's that's got a bit of face wear but um, other than that so that's the one we're using as the jig see you in a bit well they were nice sandwiches they're even nicer when you've used 25 pence um, bread that you bought uh, as five minutes before the supermarket shut uh, which was Morrison's and we went on to uh, Lidl and uh, two packets of cooked meat at less than half price you see when you're from Yorkshire originally I may have been here since 1985 but I'm still a Yorkshireman yes don't need to fritter money away right let's see where the receiver is so put the signal generator on 27.79125 so we'll start with the signal and um, we won't we'll start with the oscilloscope and hopefully this is going to be receiving so just make sure we've got oh I've just discovered my gain wasn't to fall so the deviation is going to be wrong uh, I'll tell you what we'll backtrack on that immediately Walla, one to walla. Actually, it's still perfect. So on this model, it would have just made it insensitive. So we've got uh, mic gain to full, RF gain to full. Let's go back to where we were with the oscilloscope. Right, we'll plug the test gear into the extension speaker socket at the back. and knock the power off in so doing. I'll tell you what though, you know what? We haven't checked any of the cyanide readings, have we? So, it really does sound awful. So at the moment, for 12 dB, we've got 2.4 microvolts. For 10 dB, we've got 2.2 microvolts for 20 dB it will do it it is 10 squelch so on full wax squelch never opens And on the sensitive end, let's go back to 0.3 of a microvolt and put the set to standby. So set threshold. That squelch control is dirty. Signal generator back on. Three microvolts.
So hopefully a lot of that will iron itself out. Oh, S meter. It's about spot on. It's 90 microvolts. That's really good. Right, where were we? We were looking at the detector. It's that one, isn't it? L19. Yeah. Well, it's not out. Put a bit more volume on. Give it another go. No, it's spot on. Then it's L654321. 654321. Two, one. I'll do those, but then we're going to go the other way. So we'll drop the signal. I'll use the sign on meter. I'm going to oh, turn the squelch off as well. About 12 dB. No, I thought they were well out from the way it was performing. Right, let's go to the front end. Just an improvement there. That was already spot on. That was already spot on. Let's go through those again. Now we're going to adjust this one, which we can normally adjust on the oscilloscope. If you've got the receiver actually working, because it's the IF injection into the, um, well, the 10 point, uh, 10.24 going to the receiver, we can actually see it on the synod meter. So that looks like that's where we are with it. Let's check these others again.
I'm going to see if that's any good. No, it's like absolutely lousy. Mmm. I think we may have to go through this with a with 455 kilohertz. So our 12 dB is still what? It's 1.56, microvolts. And it was 2.4. So it's come down a bit, but it's it's not acceptable. So having gone through this quite a number of times and also checked two of the transistors in it, um, it's still nothing like a sensor I would like. But then these, this chassis is always relatively de deaf to my mind. So all electrolytic capacitors in the receiver part and the power supply to the receiver have been changed. Uh, we've checked the transistor one there. I've substituted transistor 2 and um, it's been tuned and tuned again. So for 10 dB, and of course you never know how they're expressing these figures because I can alter them. So for 10 dB, we're currently looking at 1.4 microvolts. And that's supposed to be less than one microvolt. Where's my pen going? I've also had to answer the phone, which told me that my Visa card had been compromised, and if I press one, it will connect me to an operator, said the robot synthesized voice. I wasn't even aware I had a Visa card, so I haven't pressed one. Oh, it's on the floor where you'd expect. So, what we've got? Let's put that on the attenuator. 1.4. 12. 1.7. 100. Uh, 20. Four point seven. Now, let's look at these figures again. Let's put Mr. Test Set into PD mode instead of EMF mode. So now, for twelve dB, we've got point eight five microvolts. For ten dB, we've got point seven microvolts, and so on. You know, so you don't know how these figures are expressed. I always use the most difficult to attain ones. And this is proof of the pudding was is in the eating and we'll be scratchy corner testing this. So um, let's look at squelch. So when squelch is on full nothing opens it still ever. That's to do with this board that's been added, but it seems to work well as long as you don't have the squelch at full. So, never opens. Let's see what we've got at the sensitive end. Putting the test set to standby. Setting squelch threshold. Signal change to back on. Two 
2.3 microvolts. So it might it might get a scratchy corner. We'll find out, won't we? Um, so what can we actually hear down to? If I put the test set in its most difficult to achieve mode, so turn the squash down. That's three microvolts. Let's put on a different tone. Well, that's one microvolt. It's quite readable. Put a different tone on. That's point 0.3. I can hear that down to point 0.15 of a microvolt. So it's not deaf deaf, but it's deafer than uh, or the noise added is, uh, is inferior to what I'm used to. Right. Um, so that's tuned within an inch of its life, I'm sure. I didn't change that capacitor in the old squelch circuit. Uh, seeing as if this replacement squelch you've put in. Uh, there's one or two audio ones here which it's not playing up at all. Other than that, it's had quite a lot. So, uh, let's have a look about setting the S meter. Go back to a 1 kilohertz tone. Try and prop it up. I'm not going to be able to do that. I'll put 100 microvolts on. And as I've said before, it's bang on. It's actually bang on the S9, so I'm not going to touch it. It's like tuning a church organ. I don't need to untune it to, to tune it. Uh, signal meter is there. Don't need to touch it. I always te touch these MB37112s with kid gloves. They're difficult to get. They're expensive. You can pay £24 for one. Um, so that these capacitors which hadn't died in this set, um, are, it's important to change them. I think this is all being caused by that capacitor. Could have been caused by that capacitor, but we've changed them both. Whenever you get anything with this chassis, it is imperative really to change the two 220s, the two 470s, because how, how, many, how, many sets, how many scrap sets have I got to buy to get a working face like loop chip? And the average is... To, uh, one in 2.5 so that's why they've been scrapped so that's it I think really we're just going to be on the power supply next so it's just a matter of making sure it's doing 13.8 volts uh, when connected to the mains what we're going to have to do because the customer took the plug off uh, not because they don't trust me with the plug, but because they didn't want the plug to damage the set. You know when you put, shove things in the post, the plug can so easily damage a set. So we're going to loosely put a plug on, and, and by that I mean, I mean just shove it in, no cord grip, and uh, we'll set up the power supply, then we'll take the, the plug back off after the scratchy corner test. Right, so we've put a mains plug on temporarily. And we'll just see what's coming out of this power supply. It's 13.71. So we'll switch it over to start again. We'll switch it over from DC to AC. We'll see what it's doing on the output. Doing just over the four watts. Well, the, of course, when we set these up, it's um, the set's cool, isn't it? Good. There's no need to change to ch do anything further. I haven't had to adjust the power supply, so that can stay absolutely as it is. Now the lids are in Mr. Chippy's room, so we'll end this video in here. Then I'll cart it across there and. Um, and put the lids on, so to speak. So, arrows on.
Well, now, no, Roger. Nineteen and Roger. Okay. Right, we'll get that screwed together and we'll do it on the air test later on with Mr. Chippy. So quite an extensive uh, problem with this. A lot of capacitors changed, power supply rebuilt and the big killer is the TC9119 because eventually they will, will run out of being able to buy sets to scrap. And then the next thing is we will be buying fully working sets for £50 just to take the chip out of it. Thanks for watching.